today. Ooh. We got the boy D. Worley in the building, man. Stop playing. Come on. North Philly. North Philly legend. Let's go. Pinchada. Pinchada. West Virginia. Come on. To the lead, man. Come on. Here talk we go. that talk shit. Yup. Talk Here it talk. is. Uh. Uh-huh. Uh. Yeah. Mm. Uh. Sitting up late night vibing. Uh huh. Dreams up being iconic. Uh huh. Showtime speaks, we shining. Talk to him. Come on, stop playing. Come on. Uh, same city, same struggle. Uh huh. Uh, different pain, different huddles. Ew. Uh, same dream, same hustle. Ew. Come on. Yo, you want some shit? <laughs> Yo, you want some shit? You want some shit? Let me Go try get it. Let me try catch this. Go get okay. it. Look. Yeah. Look. Uh, Check it. Uh huh. I said we got D Worley here. Uh huh. We turned up. Uh huh. Ate your vet. Uh huh. He ran it up. Uh huh. Bouncing from team to team. Yeah. But that didn't stop his dream. Come on. North Philly. Uh huh. Penn Charter. Yeah. West Virginia. Uh huh. He grinded harder. Oh! To the make it. To the lead. Yeah. Now we here on Showtime Speed. Stop playing. Come on. Stop playing with him. Stop playing. Stop playing with him. What's the matter with you? Here we go. Uh huh. There is no tomorrow. Talk to him, she yeah, talk to him, talk to him. Talk to him. Come on. Yes, sir. Episode 18. Come on, man. Listen, listen, listen. Cut the music. Cut the music. Yes, sir. We got the legend in the building, man. We got one of the greats. Stop playing with him, man. Third round draft pick. Mm-hmm. We ain't even gonna get into all that yet. Just yet, because I'm too excited. I'm trying to calm down. <laughs> but this is listen, we listen, we every every week. Every week. This the episode. This the one. Yep. This the one. Man, we about to change some lives with this one, man. Like, listen, man. Episode 18. Shout out to everybody behind the scenes. FSC media team. We got the whole. We don't got the whole gang today, but we got, we, listen, we got what we got today. Yeah. Let's go. We got K-Reds in the building. And if you, listen, you've been watching the show, you've been tuned in, you've been seeing the Instagram posts, but we need you to like, subscribe, follow, Showtime Speaks, K-Red, Showtime Sheet, FSC Media Team, BXA Digital. Come on, man. And can't forget the sponsor, Cozy Jewelers, the jeweler that keeps us cool. Oops, I meant Cozy Stop. Playing. Stop playing with him, man. <laughs> I'm so look, look, because I'm, I'm hyped. Because I'm hyped. Because you know, I'm still waiting for that piece. That piece coming soon too. It's coming soon. I ain't gonna lie. It's coming soon. When we pulled up on Cozy. Listen, we was going that. We was right there. What was that Newtown Square? Uh-huh. Right next to PJ Willis. Yo, I'm in uh-huh. my bag right yeah, yo, now. Talk yo. That talk. <laughs> yo, talk that talk. Yo, talk that talk, bro. We seen the piece. I say, uh, Red's gonna be acting different when he when he when he put this joint on, bro. Man, but listen, man, let's 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 hop into the show, man. Um, listen, this person, whew, man, he's been through a lot. He's seen a lot. He's made it to the highest level of football with the Baltimore Ravens right now. Whew, them boys down there in Maryland, man, they some bullies, man. This is what they do. Shout out to Daryl Worley, man. What's going on, bro? Oh, man, appreciate y'all having me here. I mean, this is awesome. You know, I love what y'all doing. I knew I, I I had to be a part of it. You know, you know, we all from the same place. It, yeah. it, it takes a different type of respect and, and yeah. a different type of mentality to come from where we come from. So I'm happy to be here. <laughs> yeah. Happy to share this with y'all. That's love, man, for sure. And it's crazy. I was saying before the show. Yeah. I told she, it's probably like three weeks ago. I'm like, bro, you know who we should get on the show? Mm-hmm. D. Worley. Mm-hmm. Next thing you know, two weeks later, he's like, bro, you never guess who's going to hit me up. You hit me up. <laughs> and it's crazy that you're here, bro. We we bro, happy that you're here, bro. I'm happy to be here. I, I got, I'm, I'm still like, just, that's what we want Showtime Speaks to be. Yeah. We want it to be where we not, we not trying to just hit you up to try to get you to come on. We want it to be mutual. Like, yeah. yo, I'm trying to come on. I'm trying to express myself. I want to talk. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I got some stuff I want to say. I want to get off my chest. <laughs> That's what Showtime Speaks is, man. Like, we ain't looking for no clout. We ain't looking for none of that. We all about inspiring the people, mm-hmm. sharing stories, and humanizing positions, man. Like, that's what this is all about. Yes, and man. as we always start the show, man, we always talk about how we feeling currently. Mm-hmm. Kenny, how you feeling? What's going on? Yeah. What's going on, bro? For sure, man. Uh, man, to, well, today, it, yeah. the sun's out. You know this is my tight weather, I bro. know it is. So, uh, I'm feeling good, bro. Again, I said this the last episode. I'm going into a phase in my life where yeah, bro, a little bit of uncertainty. Yeah, but um, again, I got God on my side, so uh, I'm feeling good, bro. I can't, I can't complain. I'm yeah. blessed. Yeah, yeah. How about you? I'm good, bro. I mean, over, you know, not overwhelmed, but like overwhelmed with joy. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like because I just feel like I feel like we're making a real difference. 
You feel me? Like last week, you know, we had the kids come on the show. Mm -hmm. And just hearing and seeing the outpour of, of of seeing the parents, me and you talking about it last night. I mean, it's just beautiful just to just to see the direction that Showtime Speaks is going in. 100%. And how we building this thing. And um, like you said, man, it's truly a blessing to even be a part of something like this. Mm -hmm. um, it all started from, like, I, like I, we talk about, man, it started by you telling me, yo, speaking to that phone sheet, I need you to start talking to the people. And for us to be doing this together, bro, it's, it's, bro, it's really, really, truly an honor, and it's a blessing, bro, for real. I feel the same way, bro. D. Worley, what's going on? How you feeling currently, bro? Uh, I'm great, man. I uh, can't complain at all. Yeah. Um, everybody in my life is healthy. Yeah, You bro. know what I'm saying? Alive and, and well. That's all I can ask for. Nah, yeah, that's love, uh, man. Especially when it comes to myself. I mean, if I'm healthy, I mean, I have nothing to worry about. You yeah, know what bro. I'm saying? Yeah, right. uh, family is always first for me. Yeah. They're in a great spot, um, so I'm always in a great spot whenever that's the case. No, that's, that's love, bro. Let's talk about let's talk about the relationship, bro. Let's talk about how we met, bro. I feel like I've always known D Worley. It's the same thing with Philly people, bro. It's like we <laughs> always hear about each other, mm -hmm. yeah. but sometimes we don't often see each other. And I think my first time we met, we was in Carolina, bro. Yeah. I think it was in Carolina, bro. We used to line up against each other, bro. That's crazy, bro. Yeah. Just who, to... who used to get the best? <laughs> who used to get the best of who? Yeah, I knew you was gonna bring nah, this right, up. Right. Who used to get the best of who? Yeah. The craziest part is I don't remember any of it except for one time. <laughs> What's the one and time? It it showed exactly who she is <laughs> and the energy that he brings in every situation. It was like I yeah. want to say. So, you know, in Carolina, you think it's like, oh, it's never going to snow. It snowed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we had practice. We yes, didn't even we practice did. on a regular practice, nah, but we practiced we in the stadium. Yeah. So everybody in the stadium, they brought the heaters out. You, everybody, like, everybody out there like, man, I don't want to be out this month. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we out there, you know, uh, I think she was on scout team and yeah. I'm on uh, defense. Mm-hmm. And he, I, I want to say it was like an out route or something. Yeah, it was like so a, like, yeah. it, it was so cold. It was like, you wasn't really trying to touch nobody. Yeah, so like, yeah, yeah. I had the route covered perfectly and everything. And, our, and the quarterback still threw it. So I'm just like, man, whatever. So I'm thinking the ball then went high and out of bounds. She that jumped up one hand, <laughs> caught it, landed in bounds. I said, <laughs> so I start jogging back. So I'm like, why everybody screaming? This he get up talking crazy. I'm like, oh, what the man. I'm like, what's going on? Yeah. Uh, bro, it was cold, so I really ain't give a fuck. Yeah, regardless, yeah, yeah. I was just like, but after he got to talking to me, I'm like, oh man, here we go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's crazy because I remember that, bro. And I didn't <laughs> think he was gonna bring that up. Oh yeah. That was one of like, bro, that was one of like my biggest moments in Carolina, bro. That that moment right there, I was talking. I was talking crazy. And Cam and him and everybody, yeah. man. It was a bro, that time of my life was was like truly special. Like, bro, I, I finally got to meet you, go yeah. against you. Mm -hmm. Bro, I love your game, bro. I, you, bro, you and Bradbury, bro, like was probably one, two of my hardest people I ever went up against, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was like very, very aggressive. Yeah. He's more patient, but he's strong and physical, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, just having them two at that point in time was like, was special and it helped me in my career, bro. It really did. Like, just... Being around y'all, man, it was truly special, bro. Like for real. Yeah, like, man, that was a good time. And yeah, y'all two got to work out together too. You was telling me. Yeah, man, yeah. we used to, bro. Man. Yeah, shout we, out the Bing too. Shout out the Bing, man. Yeah. Hey, that's why I don't let him beat me when we work out. <laughs> Ever, I be thinking about that play every time we go. Every time we go. The crazy thing is, he came back from the workout. He said, "Yeah, man, he got the best of me today." Man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like I said that, but you know, like, man, it's just a different drink. Bro, they really be, he be, he be on it, bro. He, be, he quick, bro. Like, that's his thing. But we be going at it, bro. Yeah. Like I said, man, we've been, like, since, was it 2018? Yeah. To, like, now, and, like, Bing will always hit us up and, like, yo, like, where y'all at? We need some receivers. Yeah. And we would get some work in, bro. Major, major, major shout out to Bing, man. Yes, He's sir. doing a tremendous job with the kids, with the athletes, yeah, man. Sure. I want you to talk about Bing for a little bit, yeah. bro, like, in your um, relationship with him. Yeah. So it's crazy. Like, I felt like I knew Bing since I came in the league, but like, it was like a, we never trained together. We never yeah, knew any, like, yeah. we kind of just knew of each other. Yeah. Um, it wasn't until my, after my second year in the league that mm -hmm. I actually started working out with him. Mm. So at first, it was just like some pop ins, you know, I would just be in and out, in and out. Um, and it didn't be, it, did, it wasn't like set in stone, like, that's who I was going to train with because I was still like going back and flying back to LA where okay. I did like pre draft stuff yeah, and all that. Yeah. Um, then, you know, uh, I want to say 2017, um, I had my my son, uh, my wife and I, we bought a we bought a house in in, uh, in Jersey. So yeah. it was just like, yeah. it's better to just be around mm -hmm. here and keep being able to train in Philly. So 
being able to get something that was consistent when it came to like DB work and drills. And, you know, it's it's a million uh, great coaches that are around yeah. Philly. But he was like the guy that I was able to connect with the most. Mm, I mean, yeah. not only did he play football, you know, he was um, almost an Olympic traffic, track yeah, athlete. Yeah. So that was also big to me because, um, you know, uh, I, was, I ran track and did everything. So, yeah. I mean, it was just kind of like that bond. And I mean, we've been together ever since. Uh, we were talking about it this year. It's uh, I'm going into year nine, so we'll be together like seven years That's now. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, seven off seasons. That's, That's love, love, man. It's almost like when I hear you talk about that with you and Bing, it's the same thing with me and Kenny. Exactly. Man. It's just like mm -hmm. we've been growing together. You know what I'm saying? We talk all the time. We always trying to critique and, and get better with something. Um, it's just always good to see, like, when Philly people connect and get together and build, bro. And yep. that's what y'all been doing and just seeing it from afar, man. And then when we all get together, it's always love, bro. Yeah, always for sure. Love. Like, I want you to really, like, really dive into, like, you. Like, your life, you know. I know you're a big-time family guy. Like, if people are listening to this show, who is the worldly? Ah, man. Yeah, a father and a husband first. I would say that um, son, uh, child of God. Yeah, man. At the end of the day, you know, uh, I, I just try to be a good man. If yeah, anything, yeah, yeah. you know, if it, if if I was to knock on wood, you know, pass away, yeah, I would just want everybody to know that. Well, everybody to be able to say at my funeral that they love being around me. That's yeah. love, the yeah. person, the character, uh, stand up guy, loyal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not not really. <laughs> Not, not, no negative thing should be able to be said. You know yeah. what I'm saying, and that's kind of what I, what I hang my hat on is, um, as long, as long as your character is good, yeah, everyone will always love you. No, that's love. That's love. I live by that too, man. Mm -hmm. Like, it's hard though because you want everybody to like you, yep. yeah, but you still, you know, you want to be you at the same time, man, and you know, you want people to respect you too. Yeah, right? you mm -hmm. feel me? Like, I, like, bro, like I said, man, watching you from afar, you know, what I'm saying, like, you was always a per, like, I was a year older than you. But seeing your progress, seeing your grown, seeing that you went to West Virginia, like, bro, you went, I remember when I used to watch Tavon Austin at West Virginia I type vibes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> dun, 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 yeah. Like, come yeah, on, man. Nah, you yeah. went, and when you went to that school, it was like, he here. He, he like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. he might have a real chance to yeah. like really make it. Yeah. Yeah. And bro, to see, we're going to talk about it as we get into the show. Yeah. But man, it's truly a privilege and an honor to have you on the show, man. Just to even have you just speaking on everything that you're going to speak on today, bro. Seriously. Yeah. Um, as we get into this next segment, we're going to learn more about you, bro. Mm -hmm. um, so what we're going to do is we call this like the video segment. So we got a couple of videos that we're going to run for you. And you basically just say how you feel in these current moments. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to take you back to memory lane, bro. Yeah. For real. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah, here we go. Back in, you know what I'm saying, them pin charter days. Out in Pennsylvania. <laughs> Come on now. Come on now. How y'all even get hands on Come yeah, on now. Yeah. Come on. Ew. Oh, he was running back, huh? Yeah, he was everything. Yeah, I did everything at pin charter. Everything that I could. Uh-huh. <laughs> Come on. Only got to run the whole zone, but he was playing. Look. Come on, stop playing. And he played receiver. Before he became a DB. Craziest thing. Yeah. I went to West Virginia for a receiver. Yeah. Talk yeah. about it. Um, so just like you were saying, like you used to watch Tavon and all that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was doing the same thing coming yeah. out of high school. Like, yeah. Oh, I could be Tavon, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it, it, it wasn't a size different, a size uh, same, but it was yeah. just, you know, everybody wanted to wanted to have one of those type highlight tapes. No, nah, for um, real. When I got to West Virginia, ended up, uh, Tavon was there, uh, Stedman, him and Stedman had Stedman, just like yeah. left to go to the NFL. Yeah. Um, but coming in in my class, Kevin White, you know, yeah. uh, yep. first round pick. He ended up being a first round pick. Mm -hmm. um, he had other guys like in my class alone, uh, Shelton Gibson. Yeah. Um, we had a bunch of guys and it was just like the receiver room was about to be stuck. Yeah. yeah. Um, they had guys that were already there that were like upperclassmen. So when I came in, uh, I had a conversation with the receiver coach and he was just more so on the like, do you think that this is your last stop as far as football go or you yeah. want to go to the NFL? I'm yeah. like, I want to go to the NFL. He's like, with the things and your ability of, of what you are able to do at your size, he was like, I advise you right now, mind you, I went, I went to, I reported to West Virginia three days after my graduation. Yeah. Wow. So I graduated on Friday. I was there Sunday night. Oh, wow. dang. Like literally ready yeah. for summer and everything. Yeah. He was like, look, I advise you to make the switch right now mm -hmm. and 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 you could go, you could go to the NFL as fast as possible. For real. Wow. So That's tough. I honestly made the switch, uh, talked to the head coach, which was Dana Hogerson at the time. He just was like, all right, like, I mean, because they knew that I could play both sides, but, yeah. you know, I was there for receiver. Yeah. Um, 
I made the switch, honestly, ended up starting as a true freshman. That's, That's tough. Crazy. Like, That's yeah. crazy. That's tough. Before we even talk about the West Virginia days, man, we I want to talk about these Penn Charter days, yeah. man. That's a like, good question, yeah. I know that we both wanted to harp on this question, man. I want you to talk about your experience even being at that school, bro. Man. Like, um, what made you go to the school? So, um, And can you tell the... I know I mentioned it, but you're from North Philly, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Broad yeah. Okay. Um, I live like three blocks from Temple Hospital. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, born and raised. Uh, so the craziest part is, and hopefully this doesn't come back to bite me in the ass, but um, I cheated to get there. Wow. So uh, I played CY. So I, you know how everyone plays Pop Warner or mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, I played Pop Warner up to seventh grade. And I forgot where we got the idea from, but someone told my parents like, Oh yeah, if you want him to get into like one of these Catholic or like private schools, he needs to play um, CYO. CYO. Mm. So to play CYO, I literally use my uncle's address mm. for the school. Wow. So I would literally go to my my regular public school, which was in Kensington, yeah, and then commute to to uh, to CYO. That's love. What was that yeah, team called? St. Williams. St. Williams. Yeah. Okay. So I went to St. Williams, which is in Northeast. We practiced right at uh, Longcrest Field. Longcrest. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I was using my uncle' address, which lived right around the corner. That's wow. love. So the kids, when I first was showing up, yeah, they were just like, "Oh yeah," you know. They thought it was just like, yeah. I guess they 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 didn't think too much of it. So when they seen that I was just like at another level of yeah, football, yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone started to question, like, mm -hmm. "Damn, where the where the <laughs> fuck is he coming from?" <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, even yeah, the kids, they're yeah. like, "Yo." They even went to the coach. They like, yo, we don't see him in school during the day. Like, yeah. So it got to the point where it was like, yo, um, is this going to be a big deal? Yeah. So I was playing so well that even the coaches was like, nah, this is going to be everybody's secret. So I ended up playing over there. I was going crazy. Like, I think I want to say eighth grade alone, I might have scored like twenty five touchdowns or <laughs> something. Like it was like, yeah, so those, they, yeah, yeah, they were yeah. just like, yeah, yeah. We, so it got to the point where crazy story. I. After practice one day, I think my dad had got caught up at work or something. Like I was, I was late to be getting picked up. Yeah. You know, um, as you get further and fall, it starts to get dark earlier. Mm -hmm. So I was waiting for him, like sitting on the side. The coach was like cleaning stuff up. He's like, he was like, oh yeah. Um, he's like, your address is right around the corner. He's like, I could just drop you off. <laughs> 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 so I'm like. Oh shit! Yeah. I don't know what I should do. Like, oh, like yeah. this, this, it's all gonna come out now. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, mind you, I'm just praying. I'm hoping and praying my uncle is home when yeah, he tries yeah. to drop me off. Man, lo and behold, we get around the corner to his house. They ain't not home either. So I'm sitting outside. I'm banging on the door. He like, you don't got uh, Keys. like you guys don't. Yeah, you guys don't have no like yeah. hidden key or anything. Yeah. I'm like, nah, we don't. Man, we was probably out there. I want to say like 15 minutes. He like. It was getting to the point where I was out of work. Like I ain't had no more lies. <laughs> I ain't had nothing. Yeah. And 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 thank God my uncle came turning the corner. Yeah. To let me in the house. Saving I was, the day. That's, man. that's God right there. I bro. thought it was all gonna blow up in our face yeah, for that. That's but, that's a story. Yeah. yeah. Bro. I like, say I say all of that to say, like, to basically, you know, you guys know how that guy yeah, goes. Yeah, CYO, yeah, they, yeah. it gives you so much more exposure. Yeah, it um, does, man. Yeah. And just talk about that experience, bro. How was, you know, that transition? From going from public school mm -hmm. to private school. So the craziest thing is when I, uh, a lot of people don't know, like just looking from the outside in, you, yeah. a lot of people wouldn't know. Like yeah. I almost failed out of in charter. Wow. Like literally like wasn't making the grades. Like I'm, I'm doing tutoring, I'm doing everything. And it wasn't even the fact of like not being able to do the work. Yeah. I just never had to go through the process of having to mm -hmm. like really, you know, grind yeah, yeah, for yeah. like education wise because yeah. public school was so easy to yeah. me. It was like, oh, I can I can make the, the perfect grades without yeah. really putting effort forth. Yeah. So it was like the two, it wasn't that like I didn't know the stuff. It was like I was getting tutoring, but what I needed was like the guidance of like how to study, how mm. to prepare for stuff, how to, how, you know, how to yeah. take tests. So mm, yeah. I just needed to, I needed to find more efficient ways to use my, use my, uh, use my time. Yeah. yeah and all my yeah. resources. So it was like, once I was able, I didn't really get that down until like, I want to say until like my sophomore year. So my entire freshman year, it was a struggle. It was a struggle because I also, um, I wasn't even able to. I wasn't even able to play football. We got, I got hurt my my first game of, of high school. Oh, wow. wow! Like literally cracked my cracked my fibula and was out the entire uh, year. The, yeah, basically the entire Man. winter. Um, I ended up being able to run track a little bit. It was like late in the year, 
But honestly, I was like, it, it, I was having tough conversations when, when it came to my, like my parents or whatever. It was just like we were looking for for places to transfer and everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. So how was the culture though? I mean, was there a culture shock for you when you went there, or for sure? Was you used? Did it help you playing on that other team, kind of um, trans, transitioning into it? Not really. I would say because St. Williams was kind of like in the midst of like neighborhoods that we're used to. Okay, yeah, okay. it's like you know those kids oh, yeah, yeah, are yeah. kind of like cultured uh, yeah. still like uh, around us or, or like uh, it's kind of normal to us. Yeah. Um, but when I got to Pinchardo, it was definitely a culture shock because yeah. I mean like. Not to not to like say it one way or another, no, but like yeah. you know, you've never been around yeah. you know that that many people or like uh, been outnumbered when it comes to like race mm-hmm. and things yeah, like that. So bro. that was definitely it was a big change. So how did you adapt to it? Um, honestly, just me having like an open personality. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I felt like initially when I first got there, um, the majority kind of looked at me like, "Oh yeah, here's another athlete that's exactly. you know he's here, yeah, he's yeah. here for sports or this, this, and that." Yeah, and. I mean, they they didn't like to say it out loud, but like the reality of everyone knew I was there for sports. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, because Pinchardas say they don't give a, uh, athletic That's scholarships. What I, was doing. Yep. I, I know, mm-hmm. but yeah. I was there on an athletic scholarship. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, my parents they they couldn't have dreamed to vote forward with the hell it cost to go yeah, there yearly, man. semesterly, whatever. That's it was. a blessing, bro. Yeah. yeah. And the yeah. last question, right? Do you think you going to Pinchardas helped you kind of you know navigate in the real world? Because, you know, I went to PW, mm-hmm. and I said this in the last episode, a lot of my friends in college, you know, from Philly, yeah. they haven't been around, you know, white people. Sure. I've been around white, yeah. black, so I knew how to navigate in different rooms and stuff like that. For sure. Some people didn't know how to talk to a white person. So do you think that helped you? Yes. Um, yeah. For sure. I feel like it, it put me, it put me 10 steps of where, I would say, uh, just, just to use the West Virginia example, 10 steps ahead of people that came from likewise backgrounds, Mm -hmm. they just didn't have that professionalism. Mm. That's what I'm saying. (coughs) That's deep, bro. That's deep because it's hard, bro, like trying to navigate. Man, I remember when I first got to Del Valle, it was like, bro, I went to Roxburgh High School, bro. Yeah, yeah. Okay, like like I'm, I'm... we only had a couple of white folks, you know what I'm saying? It was yeah. cool and everybody, it, it used, it, the, the dynamic of it changed. Like my whole neighborhood was from the projects and everybody went to mm-hmm. Roxborough. My mom, my aunt, my aunt, everybody yeah. went there. Mm-hmm. So when I got to college, it was like, I got two white roommates mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> and nah, it changed yeah. my life, bro. Mm-hmm. And bro, it, 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 when you hear about your story about how it happened in high school, yeah, man, that preparation to get you ready for the real world, man, it's, it's, it's so pivotal, man. Mm-hmm. So if you are a student, if you are a, a player that's in these situations, yo, man, make sure you're learning how to communicate. Make sure you're learning how to, yeah. you know, talk to these people. Yeah. Because some of these people, like, in the future, you might be doing business with. No, that ass. You get what I'm saying? So I feel like um, the biggest thing that, to take from, if I could give someone a message as far as, like, my experience yeah. and making that transition is more so, like, don't let the fear overcome the opportunity mm. in those situations. Because when it came to, like, dealing with another race or another situation, I feel like fear is the first thing that, because you feel as though you won't make that connection. hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? And with any connection, it takes time. It takes, you know what I'm saying? It, it just like football, it takes reps. It takes, mm-hmm. you know, for you, for you to perfect those type yeah. of things. So if you're, if you're always going to keep pushing it off of, oh yeah, I'm not going to do this with, with this person. These yeah. people I won't relate with. You'll get later in your life and, and you'll, you'll, you'll have missed so many opportunities because you were scared to actually jump out there on a limb. Talk Damn. to us. Damn, that's, that's like talking about me right now with Z Short. <laughs> nah, bro. I'm telling you, yo. Bro, rap. Let's get to the next video. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. You know we got to take it here. You know, he, he know. Come on. Our defense. I mean, we, we're never giving up. Yeah. We're, we're, we're never Dub V. Oh, you should just let them score and we'll move on to the next play. Well, I mean, we, we're going into every play and every, every series with, with Come on. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. I forgot all about these. Come on, stop playing. <laughs> we going to the archives to find these. Hey, hey. I remember stop watching playing. the tape too. Man. Uh, uh, that boy D Worley going to tackle, man. Stop playing. <laughs> hey. Hell, stop playing. 
Uh huh. Uh huh. I think this was junior year too. Yeah. Talk about it. Come on, man. Talk uh, about these Dub V days, man. This is honestly, man. you know, some of them days you wish you could have back, others you wish you didn't. Mm -hmm. But I mean, honestly, I had a great time in college. Uh, great experience. Uh, it kind of shaped me into who I am today. You know, yeah, kind of like everything else. But um, I, I felt like the biggest thing that I went into West Virginia doing. And with the mindset of, uh, from that conversation that I had with far receivers coach was simply like, make this about business. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And I felt like that was the difference between me having to go there for four years and me me being able to just be there for three years and going able to <sighs> go to the crazy. next level. And what made you choose West Virginia? Um, so I was big on like, you know, when when we everybody was younger, we watched Reggie Bush, yeah, we watched yeah, all, yeah. you know, you wanted to go to those type of schools. So yeah. it was like craziest part. Um, my high school coach, I actually gave him, he he told me, like, give me a list of schools you want to send your tape out to. So, you know, you put all those schools, yeah, blah, blah, yeah. blah. And I, long story short, I felt like he laughed at me. You know what I'm mm. saying? I'm like, you're not going to make it the one. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, you're good, but you're not that this good. caliber. So yeah. um, I ended up getting, I want to say, like, 17, 18 offers, like, Division One alone. So it was just like. That's tough. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had a, I had a range of, of places I wanted to go. Um. West Virginia felt like it was far enough away from home, but still close enough to be okay. able to make that trip. Um, and it it, it, it was kind of also a decision on the side of things of like being able to weed people out. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. That's you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because it's like when you're in high school, it's like, oh, yeah, some people make it out to your game. Yeah, some people right. do this, they mm -hmm. do that. But when you get to that next level of Division One, people start to see, oh, yeah, like this is actually going somewhere. So I felt like West Virginia was far enough that if you truly wanted to make that, make that, yeah, that effort, decision yeah. Yeah, and you actually cared to, to see me play, like it was it was far enough away that I could see your dedication for it, mm -hmm. but, but you know, close enough for home for me. Now, we had a couple big time young bulls in our show the other uh, last week mm -hmm. getting offers, five, six, seven offers right now, big time school. So yeah. if you could give like one of these youngers one type of advice, what would it be on choosing a school? Choosing a school, I say... Choose a school that chooses you. Mm -hmm. Don't choose a don't choose a school because of his name or, or who's went there before That's and all deep. that type of things. Like we talked about, like Tavon Austin mm -hmm. and them being yeah. there, but that wasn't my decision on why I ended up going there. It influenced you, but yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like it's like okay, great, great talent and players. They come out of the situation, but at the same time, when I went to West, because West Virginia was literally the only. Uh, I didn't even do an official visit. Wow, I went to West Virginia the summer before my junior year. And um, uh, the summer after my junior year, and literally it was an unofficial visit. I literally walked the campus. The way that they treated me and my family, you know how yeah, they always yeah, tell yeah. you the recruiting process go. Like they're always going to show you love and blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. Dana Hogerson actually, you know, like like we said, I lived in North Philly. Like it was not a Dana Hogerson actually came to my grandma's house. That's tough. Wow. Like in the middle of North Philly, like yeah. parked. Uh, we we lived on a one way street. It was like you park on one side. More mirrors got hit than did not. So it was just like when he was able to come to that house and, mm -hmm. and sit on our couch, I, he he showed me how much he cared about me as a person. And oh, it reflected man. again once, yeah. once I once I got to the campus. Um I just say don't 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 get caught up in the names, the hype of what, what came before. Yeah. Um, because like they tell you, whether it's football, basketball, if you can play and you have talent, they'll come find you. That's love. Man, hearing those division one stories. Man, I wish I would have had that. You feel me? Mm -hmm. I was, man, we late bloomer, <laughs> like just, but hearing it through your lens and hearing it from the kids' lens from, from last week, mm -hmm. Ron, it's truly a blessing, man. When you get a full scholarship to go to a university, bro, mm -hmm. and it's not going to cost your parents nothing. Come on, man. It's love. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's really love, man. Just to even hear the story, bro. Man, I, I like we talked about how hard it was to transition in high school. How hard was it to transition to West Virginia, bro? Because I've heard a lot about West Virginia mm -hmm. and it being like, you know, a little racist up there and, and some of the things that, you know, some things that you probably experienced up there. Mm -hmm. Just talk about the day in the life of being a student, not just the athlete part, about being a student when you was at West Virginia. Because it's a big-time party school. It's a big-time party Big school. time, big yeah. time. Uh, I don't know if they're still ranked, but while during our time when we were there, they were like, we were top five for sure. Um, but I feel like West Virginia as a campus is like, 
it's overshadowed by what West Virginia as the state, state is portrays. As, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I feel like a normal day, especially take the weather that, that's outside today. A, a West Virginia, a day in West Virginia like this is beautiful, yeah. phenomenal. Every student is outside. Everyone's downtown on campus walking yeah. around. You know what I'm saying? It's beautiful. It's it, it's everything you would want it to be. You're, you're, you're actually glad to be going to school. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm, yeah. even as players, like you might skip a class or two. Yeah, like you, for sure. You just went outside to go downtown just to see everybody. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, <laughs> they, like even even like they, they say the country roads, the mountains, the hills, all, all of that type yeah. stuff. Like it's, it's beautiful to be around. It ain't fun to walk. That's I how. promise you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's definitely it's a beautiful, beautiful place. That's what's up. Let's uh let's get to the next video, man. Let's let's this vid this next one. I like this is my favorite one, man. Um with the 77th pick. I didn't even know TD announced my draft pick. Come on now. We finding them archives, see. Let's go. <laughs> with the 77th pick in the 2016 NFL draft. The Carolina Panthers select Daryl Worley, defensive back, West Virginia. Daryl Worley, somebody doesn't have the that ideal just gave me the chills, bro. That Man, God, not bro. gonna show up on the clock. What he is, he's ultra competitive. He's gonna take some risks, and some of them are gonna pay off. He's got outstanding ball skills. He can go up and get it. Play it at its highest point. You're gonna match up with some of the bigger wide receivers. This is the kind of corner you want to have because he can play high above the rim. Now, he's going to let some guys run by him at times, and he's going to take some risks and give up some plays. He's one of those guys He's going to give you some, and he's going to get some. Well, we mentioned the Panthers might have needed a corner before. Just Josh seeing, well, when he did, just seeing this, man. How, how does this make you feel, bro? Um, it definitely takes me back. Um, it's a lot of stuff, like, over time, I feel like you just – not forget about, yeah. but it's like you, you know what I'm saying? You're not looking back at it uh, uh, each and every second. Yeah. Um, but it definitely, it, it takes you into a great space. You know what I'm saying? Just to just to be able to walk down memory lane. I mm -hmm. feel like we don't ever just sit back and take the time to, to look at how far we've actually come. Showtime speaks. Come yeah. on now, stop playing. <laughs> now, did you have this dream as a kid though? Some, some kids, like some athletes we had on said like, they weren't thinking about that long term. Mm -hmm. Like, did you always have a dream to go to Lee or right when you went to West Virginia when you had that conversation with the coach? Um, no, I, I say I had mine at an earlier age than most kids did. Okay. Um, and my dad will tell you, I mean, we kind of had a conversation one day in the car and like, he just asked me straight out, like, what what, what do you want to be? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When you grow up. And I was just like, it's like I'm going to play football. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I feel like there's a difference between like having a plan and then you know, having only a plan. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like a lot of guys, a lot of guys go into things with, oh, yeah, I want to do this. Yeah, I had more of the mentality of I'm going to do this. Ah. There's no, you know what I'm saying? There's yeah. no, there was no plan B in my, in my, in my system. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So. That's a come on moment right there. Nah, <laughs> nah real rap though, bro. Real rap. Um, and that, that's just kind of how it always has been geared. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I noticed that uh, I want to say some years ago, like just having conversations with guys that may have been like either making their college decision or making a decision to try to take that next step to the NFL. And it was just like, oh, well, I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do that. And it's just like I noticed the the conversation that, that a lot of guys have. There's a plan B behind it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's when you're trying to do something, you are you know, it's not necessarily going to work like that, especially when it comes to which what you're really trying to do is become 1% of the world. Yeah, That's, you are. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like, it's, it's, it's easy for guys to like, I don't even want to like bump down like motivational talks or all that type. Cause I listen uh, to yeah, that type of yeah, stuff. Yeah. I think those, I think those things are brilliant, but mm -hmm. like when you really break down the, the, the numbers or statistics, like yeah, it, it could, anyone can relate the numbers, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause it, 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 it applies to everything, but it's like when you're really breaking down the math of I'm trying to, I, I want to do what, this is right here. Mm -hmm. It's only one way to do it. Right. And I agree with that because in my first episode with she, mm -hmm. I was talking about my transition from college to, you know, the real world. Yeah, man. And I wanted to go to the league, but I was halfway in and halfway out. Mm -hmm. So I was, I knew I had the training to fall back on. I had an internship. So yeah. like, I'm like, oh, that don't work. I ain't going to put my own into it because I know I got this to fall back on. Yeah. So that makes sense, bro. Yeah. And that wordplay, you said, I'm gonna do it or I'm trying to do it. So it's a yeah. difference. Yeah. It's, so. it's, it's definitely so I um the best story I have of like relating to that, and um it came from my older sister. Um actually when I after I ran at the combine, 
Yeah. So my job, I left early. That I didn't have the opportunity that the the guys have nowadays, where it's like you can leave early if, mm-hmm. if your draft thing doesn't go as you thought it would. You can return to college. Mm. So mine was more so. Uh, once I made that decision of of leaving early, it was it was over with. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? If this didn't work, I was going to be out of college. Right. My scholarship was going to be done. Right. Um. After I ran at the combine, um, I ended up running slow. Like I ran like four six at the combine. It mm. wasn't what I what it wanted to be. Yeah. Even though everything all every, my measurables were awesome. I did great in drills and all of that. Um, I remember she called me after and was like, it was more so the question of like, do you regret your decision? Right. I'm just like, this is only this is the only path. Like, you know what I'm saying? Ain't no right. turns, ain't no, no turns turn, off yeah, this highway. Yeah, like, yeah, you, know, you turn it. I'm like, nah, I don't regret anything. Like I however however this go, I'm I gotta stand on it. No, yeah. yeah. And and that's that's kind of where like it became set in stone, especially when it came to the NFL of like, it's plan A or 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 you're gonna be home. Yeah, <laughs> that's love. I want you to talk about that feeling. You got your whole family in the room. That phone is ringing. You pacing back and forth. Round one go by, round two go by, and you finally get that call. Oh, man. Um, So the craziest part, round one, I want to say we were in, um, we might have been at my brother's barbershop. Like, we were just like, I think we were eating crab legs or whatever. I was watching it, and like, Seeing the guys that got picked, like I wasn't necessarily compared. I wasn't expected yeah. to go that day, so mm-hmm. it was just like, yeah. Seeing the guys that got picked and kind of like how their story panned it out, mm-hmm. it was like, damn. I always think about it all the time. Like, damn, if I would have ran such and such, that that could have been, you know. Yeah. So it was kind of that. But then when day two came around, uh, we did have like a small gathering. Like, mm-hmm. um, we were all chilling, hanging out, watching it, um, and I was like getting. You kind of you're yeah, so anxious yeah, that yeah. it's like the fear starts to overtake, <laughs> yeah. but it's, it's it's like inevitable because it's like it's such an unknown. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and it got to the point where I don't even felt I didn't feel pressure from everyone around me. I felt like I was putting pressure on myself. Mm. And the biggest thing is like when you gather those people around, it's like the last thing you want to do is let them down, Damn, and it yeah. doesn't happen. It's not even it's not even necessarily that you'll be hurt by yeah, it. Yeah. Yep. Like, cause of course your feelings are going to be hurt, but yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't even say it's a feeling of embarrassment. It's more so like, damn, I, I let, I let everyone, them, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So I honestly kind of just went into the room by myself. Um, and the craziest part is, uh, Steve Wilkes, the uh, DC that was DC. at the 49ers yep. last year. He, um, he ended up being the one that gave me a phone call. He called me. He, I had his number already saved because mm-hmm. we did a a pre-draft, pre-draft workout. Yeah. Okay. Um, and when he called me. It was just it, you, it was like I was speaking to a man I knew my entire life. Wow. You know what I'm saying? It 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 kind of it kind of shook me up, but at the same time it relaxed me. Like Jesus, like it, it actually came true. And uh, I think the best part about it for me, it may not have even been the phone call. It was the fact of when I walked back out of the room, I didn't I didn't even tell anyone. Yeah. Anything. <laughs> I, I really just I stood at the doorway and they were like, "Yeah, it'll be on the TV in like the next like 60 seconds or whatever." Yeah. So I kind of just let everyone, you know, what I'm saying, it, get yeah. the moment the same way that yeah, I got the moment. Yeah. I felt like that was that was the most special part for me. It's, it's having everyone's reaction just be legit and you know not coming from me. Now, when did it hit reality that you was that it like you was there? Like you, you know what I mean? Sometimes it don't set in until like you get on the uh, facility. Like when did yeah. it like touch you? Like um, damn. shit, yeah. Uh, I don't, I wouldn't say it didn't hit me for real. Like it, I felt like that fr- that that rookie year kind of feels like such a yeah, coll- coll- like everything's collided together. Yeah, you've yeah. been training, you've been doing this. Everything's on you the only, you really only have like a month off before you end up having to go to camp. So yeah, it's like bro. I want to say my NFL moment of like oh I'm in the NFL is um remember Mike Tobert the fullback fullback yep we were in OTAs and Mike shook the shit out of me Ooh. like shook the shit like I'm talking about open field yeah remember Mike was like 265 mm-hmm. like he a was. little bowling ball so yeah. I'm like man I'm about to run by a taggy mom yeah. he shook the shit out like <laughs> yeah. next thing I know my knees was touching we was in open field <laughs> everybody went crazy I yeah, said yeah oh shit yeah this is the NFL yeah like, right everybody everybody's doing this I, but that that was definitely my moment that's what's up man. bro that's <laughs> This is turning me up. Like, <laughs> just hearing yeah. you talk about it, like, bruh, 
we've had, you know, I, I didn't get drafted third round, nothing like that, but just being able to have that experience of making it to our dream job mm -hmm. and to be doing it for however long we've been doing it for. Like you said, we taking a trip down memory lane and I hope you feeling like when you leave here, you like, man, like, yeah, I'm really still doing this shit, still man. Doing it, bro. Yeah. And like, bro, like just hearing you talk about it brings me even back to my moments of seeing my family and, and, and screaming when I went undrafted and yeah. going to Philly and all that stuff like that, man, that, Man, watching even I remember hearing your name and watching you get drafted, and I was geeked up. And I yeah. think I came the next year because yeah. I think you it was your was second, like second year, your second year. Um, Carolina was fun, man. Carolina was different. Carolina yeah. was energy. Carolina was, you know, it meant a lot to me just being in that space, being around you, being around Bradbury, Cam Newton, all yeah. them dudes. We was around some great, bro. Great, great. Some guys. great dudes, man. I'll never forget that time when. Um, I think we was in camp, and Christian McCaffrey came up, and he started playing the piano. I'm like, I ain't even know this dude yeah. can do this. Yeah. <laughs> he playing the piano, and then all of a sudden, man, all of a sudden, Greg Olson gets up, and he does the Eminem joke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, when I tell you, when he pulled the pants down at the end and said, mm -mm -mm, walk across, hey, bro, the whole <laughs> room went crazy bro <laughs> bro just that experience alone was like crazy what was one of your best memories of being in carolina bro um i mean we had so many uh it's just like it, it, and i try to tell guys this all the time is like there's stars in the nfl now mm -hmm. and then there's stars you know what i'm saying superstars and yeah. it's like I came in playing with real superstars. superstars. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. guys that were literally the face of the NFL. No. Yeah. So it was like, it's hard, It's kind of hard to get bigger than that. No, you know for real, saying? man. Um, I couldn't even pinpoint an exact moment. Um, man, you was honestly, playing with so Luke Kiko. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's what so I was many that, to say. Yeah, it was so many out. that was so special. You know what I'm saying? And they and, and everyone brought the best out of each other. Like <laughs> it was Peppers. even times. Yeah, like it, it was times like when I felt as though like. Like not not that I was questioning my abilities, but it was like, damn, like am I really out here with these guys? Yeah. Am I supposed to be? Am I ready to be out here with these guys? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because mind you, I came out early, so when during that that I want to say year one and year two, I'm still 21. You're still trying to I'm still, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm, so it was just like, damn, like it 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 developed me so much as a player because again, we weren't necessarily worried about losing games. We mm -hmm. were more so worried about, I was more so worried about letting two, letting, letting Luke down, letting mm -hmm. TD down, letting mm -hmm. Cam, you know what I'm saying? Nah, for so real. So it's like the, they, they set the bar so so high for themselves. It was like, you if you fell below it, you you kind of felt the way about nah, it. Nah, for real. That's tough. Talk, I, and I know you, I hear you talking about it. How did you deal with that pressure, bro? You know what I'm saying? Being a 21 year old, man, there's a lot of 21 year old, 20 year olds, mm -hmm. 22 mm -hmm. year olds, people still trying to figure out who they are. Mm -hmm. How did you get through that, bro? Or did you feel pressure? Oh. Some people might feel, some yeah, people yeah. not. I would say initially, it felt like pressure. Like mm -hmm. it felt like too much pressure at yeah. a point. Um, I remember distinctly uh, when I was in Carolina, we had like a, we might've had like a full defensive meeting. Mm -hmm. And like me and me and JB, we never really talked in the meetings. Like we would just like kind of sit quietly, let it happen, you know, let things happen. And we were kind of like, I want to say our, that second year, our season didn't start the way it was supposed to, mm -hmm. even though it finished great. I think we finished like 11 and five or something like that. We played against the Saints. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was like, we were at like a point in our season where it could either go far left or we could turn around and things start going right. Uh, we were having that defensive meeting and, and something just came over me and I just told him like, I'm like, yo, like, I feel like y'all putting too much pressure on us. Right. And I mean, you know, me and JB, we lived in the same building. We were hanging out yeah, every day. Yeah, it was like, was it was tough. Pop. Yeah, so yeah. it was like, I was speaking from both of us because JB would never say it. Yeah, he yeah. quite and, quiet. Yeah, and... and it was like from that point forward when I told them that and just expressed it honestly. I was like, I didn't, I don't know how else to put this. Like, yeah, I feel like y'all gotta let us chill the fuck out. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Nah, yeah. Um, and from that point forward, like I felt like we started playing our best ball. Like mm -hmm. in in it, it, on from both of our sides. It was just like we were out there more free. We were we were more so having fun instead of being like uptight and and just scared to make mistakes. That's love. Yeah. So you've been on a journey. You've been a lot of places, bro. Mm -hmm. Journey, man. This next video is probably one of my favorite videos of you, bro. 
All right, Coach, let's talk about a little uh, defense. I know you like aggressive physical corners. You want These guys that can be videos. able to tackle, and Daryl Worley funny. back on the squad here has shown us that uh, he has those skills. Yeah, Worley uh, at the top of the screen here, Chris, he comes out of West Virginia, played at Carolina for a couple of years, missed the first four games. He was suspended, but what you see is recognition. He sees Rivers throw the quick screen. And a lot of corners in this world conveniently let somebody else make the tackle. But <laughs> Worley's one of those guys Talk that to us. Uh, mm. when he sees it, he'll go get it. And that's a great play on a quick screen. And as you know, the quick screens are a problem play in pro football. Yeah, now let's, yeah, go, let's, go, to the let's go to the next clip. Let's go to the next clip. Before we even talk about this, clip, let's <laughs> go to the next clip. <laughs> yeah, here it is right here. <laughs> Stop playing. For Stop playing. Uh. Stop playing. Uh. Stop playing. Uh. Yeah. Talk about it. Come on, Man. you got you got grew and one of the greats, one of the gurus talking mm. talking highly of you, bro. Talk about your transition, different team, you being in a Raider. This is one of my favorite plays of you, bro. I was screaming. I remember seeing this play like remember that job, live, too. bro. Talk about it, bro. Oh, uh, honestly, I would say that's the greatest player of my career, <laughs> hands down. I mean, every morning I felt like you know you in middle school, yeah. you wake up watching top ten. Like, the fact that I was able to make it on yeah, sports in the top 10, I was yeah. like, man, this is, you know what I'm saying? This will go down. I think that'll be a memory forever. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like, Gruen, he was, a, he's one of my favorite guys. <laughs> um, super animated, you know, Very, passionate. He, yeah. he just loved what he did. Yeah. Um, I had a, I had a great time with him. Uh, wish, wish things could have went, like, a lot longer, you know, and, and yeah, a longer bro. tenure, but... Honestly, that, like he said, like a lot of corners in the league didn't want to, we didn't want to tackle. Yeah. Um, just like going back to my time in Carolina, it was during the, it, I want to say it was the era of like the outside zone. Yes. Mm, the, the, crack, the crack, the crack, crack, yeah, 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 outside. Yeah. Yep. So it was like, I had, I, t I remember in one year alone, I tackled AP, Mark Ingram, uh, Alvin Kamara. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like yeah, it, yeah, I tackled yeah, real dudes <laughs> no, coming did, like bro. bouncing off that edge. Yeah. So it was like, you were forced to tackle, and it was like right. the guys that that didn't make that decision and didn't want to didn't want to stick their nose in there. You slowly seen them get it weeded out. You know Philly. what I'm saying? Because yeah. it, it wasn't people could say what they want to say of oh yeah I can strap this this and that and that. Can you tackle? Everyone's not a yeah yeah. Everyone yeah. can't go out there and lock every single. You can't, game, bro. It's the NFL. Yeah. Like it's just it's simply not going to happen. Everyone yeah. doesn't have that ability. I would never say that I had that ability. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, it, I brought more of a complete package to the you table, did. and you that's did. that's what kept you do. me. At, you know what I'm saying at cor at corner. And nah, you safety now though, right? Did yeah, you, you transitioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Made we're gonna get to that. We're gonna get to oh, that. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> we can talk about that though. Yeah, but yeah. bro, that's very true. One of the next plays that they were talking about was one of those outside zone plays mm -hmm. where you had threw Keenan Island and you had made a nice tackle, bro. Like, bro, talk to these DBs right now, bro. A lot of these DBs, they want to put up the strap signal. They want to put – it's all of these. It's all of the, the showboat <laughs> stuff. I know you talked about it a little bit, man. What's your advice to playing corner, making it to the highest level, getting mm -hmm. to college? Mm -hmm. Talk about that experience and how – you know what I'm saying? Like what you need to say to these young dudes because it's a lot of 707 7 going on. It's a mm -hmm. lot of stuff that's going on right now. Talk to these kids, man. Um, I feel like – one thing that our like this generation right now is caught up in is the seven on seven, the pass scale, the one on ones, the let's hit the field, and, the, and I was never big on that type of yeah, stuff. Right. Like even you know even when everybody in the city was doing it, like I might pop out for one, one, yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying. Like yeah. and it's like I'm not I'm not going out here to go one on one while the quarterback sit back there and you do the you do the circus yeah. route that takes <laughs> seven seconds and. Yeah. You just really out here trying to embarrass me and make yeah, me fall. Nah, it's bro, like right. yeah. it just don't happen like that. Football is a is a complete sport. Yeah. And I know a lot of guys that can run with anybody, break on a dime, do this, do that. I don't see them in the NFL. Yeah. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So I feel like being a corner is more so being able to cover, mm -hmm. but but you see guys get high praise when they can tackle. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And well, a guy that I actually came in with, he went fifth pick, Jalen Ramsey. Like he's a he's a phenomenal player. Yeah. But at the end of the day, never have you seen him shy away from tackling. tackling right? You know what I'm saying? None of that. And it doesn't matter how much money you make, how much you do this. Now, mind you, you make twenty million a year, this, this, and that. Yeah, they might turn a blind eye to you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yeah. you got to you got to get to the twenty mil first. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's to like get to that point. Yeah, you you. I, I would always say physicality is it, it should be, it should be 
one of your top three things when when trying to make it to the next level as a No, yeah. What about the mental part though? Um crazy I for I getting plays, yeah. That's yeah. what I that's yeah. mainly what I'm talking about. Um I feel like that's the that's one out of a lot of situations. Yeah. yeah. Um so actually I could us being being in Philly and, and doing things like that. Um Rasul Douglas. I mm-hmm. play for Eagles. Yeah, yeah, um yeah. a good great guy, one of my one of my dogs. You know what I'm saying? I could call him right now. Um he he went to JUCO and then came to West Virginia. Yeah. Um I while I was there. So my junior year, like it was kind of it was kind of at the forefront of like, oh yeah, it should have been us on, on both sides. He was having like a a, a little trouble learning a playbook. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So when when you're when you're mentally not there or at the stage that they need you to be, you can't play as fast as you you're not going to play as fast as you mm-hmm. need to play. You're not going to be able to step up. And they, uh, honestly, it comes with trust. Yeah. If the coaches can't trust you, they won't play you. Yeah, like, and yeah. that's everyone knows that. Um, so it was kind of like I felt like he would have it, it would have been like a one two tandem where both of our corners got drafted that year mm-hmm. if he was able to you know what I'm saying mentally be at that stage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it took him another year where he ended up getting drafted third round as well. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But it's just like the faster you can learn that mental side of things and put that time in and put it, as much as much work if you put in your, into your physical, craft, yeah. yeah, your physical craft. If you put that same amount of time into your into your mental craft, it, you'll you'll be the light years ahead. No, but but also talk about like you know you getting scored on that. That type of mental part, like how do you get past that? Um, so I had a, uh, I had like a mentor. He played. Mm. He was, he was a. Uh, I can't even remember. He might have been a GA when I was at West Virginia. He yeah. went to. He played at the high at, at a very high level. He went to uh, Oklahoma State. Yeah. Um, and we would always just talk and rap. And he literally said one thing to me, and it always stuck with me. He said, "Regardless of what happens during this play right now, during the snap." You're going to have to play the next play, right? So whether you get scored on, you catch an interception, you you break the ball up, yeah. The outcome is the same for the next play. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That that the the slate the slate is blank for the yeah. next play. He was like, so have that mentality regardless of what happens. You know what I'm saying? Be able to move past it because like you get too joyful. <laughs> you could get scored yeah, on that yeah, very next play. play. Right. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? If you catch an interception, you could go out there and give up a, 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 a touchdown, touchdown on the very next play. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it was always even next kill. play. Yeah, even it's kill. Heavy. Like that's why I've never been like a I've never been a big, big celebration guy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause it's it's like more it's more my demeanor to to just say even kill. See even. Yeah, I like that. Nah, man. You talking that talk today, bro. <laughs> yeah, that's what Thanks. that's what that's what we need, man. That's what these kids need to hear, man. Like Come on, man. We're really talking today, bro. Um, <laughs> right. Shoot, man. I'm so excited about this next segment, bro. We've got a number of pitchers. Well, I just want to keep it rolling right mm-hmm. now. Yeah. We got a lot of pitchers in here, maybe four or five pitchers. Um, let's talk about the same thing with the videos where we, you know, get excited about it, see it, talk about it. I can't imagine how this is about to go. <laughs> <laughs> let's look at these picks, man. All right, here we go. <laughs> As we start this new segment. <laughs> all right. When we talk about fashion icon, like this dude is on a whole nother level. And I think he went to a whole nother level this year. Yeah. yeah. Every time I open up the gram, <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm talking about this dude is in the GQ <laughs> oh, magazine shit, yeah. every single week. <laughs> talk about it, bro. bro. Where talk- do you where do you even get the inspiration from? What's what's going on, man? How you do this, man? Bro, uh, I got a purple suit. I was gonna wear my purple suit. I'm not even lying, bro. I got a purple suit. I was gonna wear my purple suit. I said that to she. I should have should have pulled up in my purple suit. You should have, because I knew I said if we have D D Worley on this show, I'm coming correct. I didn't put the the you know saying the parachute pants on, the jacket. I said, nah, D Worley ain't coming to address me today. I was gonna wear my purple suit. He came with a calm outfit today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. Because the way he be doing this is crazy, bro. Talk about it, man. Um, no, nah, I felt I kind of felt like I always just tried to like I, I liked fashion. Never yeah. really like dove like super hard into it just because I, you know, I didn't really have like the the guidance or the lead. Um <laughs> So I was always like, even back to Carolina days, like I always did things that I felt like I liked. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like fashionable in my own way. Uh, mm-hmm. Going going back to the college, it's always been like that. Like even though, shit, I might not have had the money to afford yeah. the things that I wanted, I was able to, you know what I'm saying? Stuff yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah. Zoomies, H&M, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Be, able to, be able to put it together the way you want to. I'm still in uh, there. I'm still in there. <laughs> yeah. But my, um, 
well, my best friend, uh, Austin, he's like heavy, heavy into fashion. Like literally any any piece you see a person wearing, he can he can source it that. for you, find out where the, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he's kind of like, he's kind of like brought me along with it. That's um, what, be able what. to be able to, you know, look things up, find what I really want. And kind of like, and from that point, I've been able to like construct of like what a, what I'm into, what I'm not into. Yeah. Um, I feel like the biggest thing about fashion is expressing yourself in your own way. Mm. Um, not doing too much. Like, I, like I, I don't, I don't put a knock on anything or any that people do, but there's things that I know just isn't me. Like, yeah. I, I, like I'm not, I'm not wearing, you know, sheer with, yeah, the, yeah, with nipples yeah. out or yeah, any yeah. of that type, yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, it's just I, I just try to stay in my own lane yeah. and um you know just being able to put things together and and it the the clothes are more so about like who who's wearing it not, yeah, yeah. not what the clothes are you yeah. know what I'm saying because mm -hmm. you could see you you could see a person wear a fifteen thousand dollar outfit and be like yeah. yo that's still corny yeah you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? facts facts <laughs> man that's man I try I listen I try to be as fashionable as I can <laughs> but this dude man I didn't see them. <laughs> Do she be throwing more. it on too. Now. Oh, 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 we got her next. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. See you in here next. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> Let's put the next one up here because listen, this might be the new Jay Z Beyonce type vibe. Because <laughs> no, that's the picture I was talking about. With Yo, let me put it on. Hold on, man. <laughs> yeah. Let me get close to the camera. When I tell you, man, when I see these two nah, we're, we're, on we're, we're, IG, you know what I'm saying? They got the Whirly's family on, yeah. on, on TikTok and all that, bro. <laughs> Come on, man. Talk about you and your wife, man. And, um, and how y'all really be doing this? Are you inspired by her? Is she inspired by you? Um, how does this whole process work, man? I'm definitely like I felt like it was like a inspired thing, but now I feel like it's like a competition. Right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like yeah. I feel like she be I, you know I'm, I feel like I might be trying to keep up at this yeah, point. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I mean she she's definitely like elite. You know what I'm saying? Like in the same way, like she was still putting it together. You know yeah. what I'm saying? When we like quote unquote didn't have money or like be able to afford what we want, but yeah. Honestly, she she does her thing. Um, up, honestly, man. I'm trying to keep up with her. She kind of she kind of pushes my envelope forward when I feel as though that's I'm not doing enough. So. That's love. That's what's up, man. I want you to talk about your relationship, man. How y'all met, man? How how this whole thing started? Like, oh, so uh, honestly, West Virginia again. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we we met uh, high school senior year of high school. Yeah, uh, knowing that we were going to the same college. Um, you know, that was how the the initial connection started. Right, and you know, just going forward into school, and uh, we kind of never turned back from there. Uh, being at West Virginia, we were kind of like the which we still are, like the the comfort space for each for each other. That's what's up. Uh, being away from home. Um, just being being together, I felt as though we were able to get that that safe space and that that comfort feeling. That's love. Um, being around each other, um, we've been together ten plus years now. Yeah, um, married for going on four this June. That's love. Uh, That's you know, she's my best friend. Mm -hmm. uh, love her to death. Uh, wouldn't change her for the world. That's what's up. Not gonna lie, man. I admire y'all, man. Like, you know, seeing y'all from afar, mm -hmm. watching y'all today being the first time I've ever met her. Yeah. Man, I've been watching y'all. I I admire it because I want that one day. And you guys are at the forefront of what we looking at nah, facts. for relationship. Facts. You know, like I sat there last night and I was going through like, bro, I feel like I know both of y'all more than <laughs> ever now. Because I was doing my research. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and just yeah. seeing y'all with the family, seeing y'all, how do y'all play around with each other, all mm -hmm. y'all videos that y'all yeah. do, the challenges. See, so, I wasn't going to put that, the, nah, the videos. I, I, the I, thought, I thought you were going to put the TikTok. I was on the TikTok drawing the other day. You, I thought, try, you was drawing. I thought about it. But they be having yeah. so much fun. And I'm not going to lie, it is a privilege. And I'm so happy and glad that you guys even put that kind of energy out there to the world. Yeah. Because it inspires men like me and Kenny, you know what I'm saying, Thanks. just to see stuff like that Thanks. and to see that kind of love at that level. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if y'all probably had your ups and downs, but to see how y'all do it on a daily basis, man, it is truly special. Yeah. Um, and I respect it, man. I, I truly do, I appreciate bro. it. I mean, for sure. I mean, you know, everyone's going to have their their rough patches, their yeah. ups and downs. Um, everyone's going to find something to fight about. You yeah. know what I'm saying? For sure. Yeah. <laughs> we, we say the president is a perfect person in the world. He still finds something. He still finds something, You know something, what I'm saying? Sure. So um, at the end of the day, it's about it's about wanting the wanting what's with the person more than you know what I'm saying you want yeah. you want to go through what you're going through. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so just just finding the light in, in every situation and honestly we we help each other. Yeah. Um, I, she she definitely helps me more than she'll ever know and more than I could ever offer to help her. Um, just being the you know the mother, the wife, the, yeah, the friend, you know everyone every everything that she is. She's a she's a light spot in dark times. 
<laughs> man, that's 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 special, man. I want to get to this next picture, man. Cause this picture right here, <coughs> I think we're all, you know, trying to strive to get to this space right here as yeah. a, you know what I'm saying? I don't have any kids yet and everything like that. Talk about you and your family, man. Talk about what those kids mean to you. Um, man, especially. Um, man. You know, everything. Um, and I, I feel like that's the simple way to say it, but like, I feel like it gives you a different purpose um, of doing why you do what you do. Because mm-hmm. um, there's always the, oh yeah, I love football, I love this, I love that. Um, but being able to have those guys there, and I felt like going back to, <clears throat> I want to say Oakland, where we we just had my son, we may have just had Carson, and um, I want to say our, uh, our nanny at the time, she took a video of, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> she took a video of uh, of Caden like in the suite, like just watching the game, and it was like a it was like a a back view of him of him like watching out over the field and everything. It was just like from that moment forward, like, you know, you kind of you kind of see like what your kid, you, what your what you mean to your kids and and everything, and it's just like it's so special to to be able to have those types of moments and memories to look back at, and just knowing that they'll they'll have the the moments like that for a lifetime, it's just awesome. Yeah. And I feel like it's it's not even just football when it comes to me. Like you just, even though though, I promise y'all my kids, they get on our damn nerves, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but you know, you still love them to death. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Cause at the end of the day, you lay them down at night and it, you just get that, you look at them and it's just like, what what am I really mad about? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like what, what was I really mad, mad with you about earlier? So, I mean, kids are, are definitely something special. Um, I, I still give everyone the advice. Don't really do it till you're ready. Yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying. Because, I remember that was something yeah. that you told. Yeah, I remember you talked about that. Yeah, I wouldn't tell anyone to anyone to do it till you're ready and do it until you're ready. And uh, you know, God's timing is, is better than anything that we could plan for ourselves. But yeah. at the same time, it's like parenting is an everyday job. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. we we all have our day jobs and and what we work at, or whether it's training or yeah. you know what I'm saying going to the office and and, and computing something. But at the same time, parenting is the job that is going to have a loophole in it every single day. Because mm-hmm. those kids are going to wake up, they're going to do something new. Like the, I, I, I wish that we had like a sitcom camera in our house yeah. of like <laughs> when our kids do something new and we look at each other like, "Yo, what the? <laughs> like, did they really just? You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's just it's something. It's it's going to bring something new out of you each and every day. Yeah, you know what I'm saying and. Me and my wife, we've got like more in like a, a more re- a reflective space right now of like really like sitting back of, oh yeah, I need to do da 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 with, you know what I'm saying? Try yeah. try to do this forward or, or push this forward. And when you really sit back and look at it, it's like, damn, like I'm talking about something new every time we do this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like, it's definitely, it's a new formula to it. Yeah. Yeah. Now you guys, did she write the book or? Yes. Can she you is t- the author. Let's, oh, let's, oh, we got that up there? We got she, that up Oh, there. okay, okay. Let's pull it up. This is special, man. Yeah, it's special. Because I just want to say, so I used to work uh, at the school with special needs kids. Mm-hmm. And me and my uh, friend, Jen Lurdy, got a nonprofit called Playing for Smiles. So oh. basically, it's like Rats Camp, but we, we do camps every, like, so often mm-hmm. for kids with special needs. So once we saw this, I'm like, I got to bring this up to you. Yeah, yeah maybe yeah. we can do something in the future and stuff like that. For sure. That, for yeah. sure. I, w- I want you to talk about it a little bit. Um, yeah. I wish she would come over and sit at the yeah, mic yeah, so she yeah, could yeah, talk yeah. about it. Nah. Not she wouldn't be shy. But <laughs> honestly, it was a, it was something that just, for me, came out of nowhere. Yeah. She, you know, she kind of had it planned. It was like her little baby, her secret. Yeah. And I was kind of finding out, like, I want to say shortly before everyone else was finding out. Like, that's yeah. how, like, close to the vest she was playing it. Mm-hmm. And um during the time i'm just like damn i wish you would have shared it with me but it's like <laughs> yeah the way that she rolled it out and did everything i was just like i had to respect the way it happened because it was like it was so masterful it, it was so full of everything and yeah being able to just tap into the 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 wide scope of our family and everything that went on like I, it's beautiful um you know the the first book is you know just all about the kids and like yeah. them being able to like connect as just siblings um yeah saying like i don't want to share and stuff like that um, the it, it really focuses on you know that that older child and middle child like that they are mm-hmm. the ones that really fight in the in the first one yeah um and then the second one is 
actually, it came out last summer. We were able to, we we finally got a diagnosis on my oldest son having autism. Yeah. So it's all about autism, which is the one that's displayed. And yeah. honestly, it's like a, it's just masterful because it really, it really taps on like what we go through in our everyday lives. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. it's, I feel like the autism is more mentally challenging for and, and the anxiety of the parents. Mm -hmm. You know talk what I'm about, saying? Talk about it. Than it is on the actual kid. Yeah. And I feel like I sit back sometimes and I kind of like think about it like, damn, like I'm worrying about things that he never even, even worries about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then the books, uh, see, she touches on like how, how the interactions with the siblings and everything goes. Yeah, um, and, you know, it's 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 all about care and love. Yeah, and for sure. <laughs> it's, it's like the, I feel like one thing that that always like free flows in my head is like, you're worried about his autism. Mm -hmm. He's not. You know what I'm saying? Right. To him, he's normal. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's deep, mm -hmm. man. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's the hardest. I feel like that's the most difficult. And I still haven't mastered it. Of mm -hmm. like, she she's definitely better than me at it. And just being able to like not treat them different, but like mm -hmm. not try to overwhelm or do too much. Yeah, you bro. You know what I'm saying? Yep. That's. <laughs> that's not to cut you off, she, but that's how it was for me when I first got into it. It was like um, I saw some teachers treating the kids different, but like the kids gravitated towards me because yeah. I was just treating them regular, man. Mm -hmm. We all had a hand; they all remember the handshake and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. So, like you said, bro, it's all about love and just you know, our whole goal is just providing that same opportunities for them yeah. that everybody else has. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Now it's truly, it's truly special to see. And for you guys to be very open about it. You know, it is Autism Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll talk about my experience with it. One of my teammates up in uh, Winnipeg, mm -hmm. you know, I never knew that his son had autism. I didn't know that he had it. And just watching, I met, I met the son and his wife for the first time because they had signed back to Winnipeg. And it's just truly amazing to see how they handle the situation and how hard it is, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, like you said, you touched on it, man. It's more so like the anxiety and the and the stuff coming from the parents. Mm -hmm. Like, I want you to really talk about how how it was for you to accept that your child had autism mm -hmm. and how you got through it, bro. Um, I felt like the initial diagnosis or like getting the call was like. It may have been tough in like different reasons, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And there was it, it wasn't until I sat back and thought about it. There were everything that I was worrying about was out of my control. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying. And when I when I, once I got to the realization of you're trying to control something that you can't control, like oh yeah, now my child won't be able to blah 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 in the future. Mm -hmm. He won't be able to have this normal blah. It's like. God already has all of these things written. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's it's going to pan out the way that it's going to pan out. Yeah. You can never control what's to come, yeah. honestly. So it's like, why am I trying to worry about it? And I felt like the the biggest thing that I was thankful for was C, because she never, nothing ever changed in her about it. That's love, man. You know what I'm saying? Getting a diagnosis and and seeing the way that, that the, the only thing that she did do is start to do more research on it mm. of like, how to handle it, what, what, you know what I'm saying? How how to be more more careful about it and, mm -hmm. and like how to caress him and, and, and the things that he may, not, he may need. Even more routine. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So it's like having her in my, in, in, in the corner, in my corner was, was a blessing more yeah. than anything, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? That was the, that was the best thing that, that could have had. It, it was having her because she, it just, it, you know how it's like, <laughs> When a tragedy happens to a family, everyone tries to turn to the father. Yeah. It was like, as a man, when you feel as though something is like uncontrollable for you, mm. you kind of feel like weak. weak. And Ooh, yeah, like you, deep. you know what I'm saying? You kind of feel open. And that's how I felt about the situation. Mm, Cause it's wow. like, as a man, you always feel like, how can I fix this? Mm. And it, that was something that came to our plate. And it was like, I really can't fix this. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, her being able to step in and honestly be the amazing mother that she is, she was able to handle it. And she she helped not only him, but she helped me through it oh, as well. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And I see it from a different light when it comes to autism and everything like that. It's 
Love. It's truly special, man. Big shout out to C, man, and, and your wife and, and everything, man. Like, it is hard, man. You know, I watch my boy and I, and I see how he hurts from it. He gets emotional about it. He doesn't always show it. You know, shout out to Kenny, man. Like, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you and your family, bro. I love you, bro. You know, it's a battle. It's a battle, but it's a battle that you can win. You know what I'm saying? This is to all the parents out there that's battling with, you know, autism and, and fighting through it. And, you know, you're not alone. And I'm so glad that we got Worley on here because, you know, this is a this is a symbol of, you know, he's he's finding a way to make it between sure. him and his wife. Mm -hmm. And he's given a lot of the credit to his wife because when it comes to a woman, women are very patient. Very. And they have much more patience than we do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just seeing how strong the mothers are, man, it is truly a privilege to have all of you women in our lives, man, because you guys do so much for us. Because as men, like you said, we do always want to fix a problem. Yeah. And 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 when we can't, we feel weak. Yeah. We feel like we like, like we not like something. we failed and we're not doing our job. And for you to even come on and, and even talk about that and even express that, man, that's that's a major, major blessing. And it's gonna help so many people out there, bro. For sure. And um I felt like the one of the biggest things is like, I wanna say it definitely when it comes to like minorities, is like the yeah. I wouldn't even call it secretism or like, mm. you know, people just try to hold it so That's close true. to the, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's not until you begin to have those type of conversations of, oh yeah, my, so whether, you know, it's it's your child directly or someone close to you or yeah. having autism or this like that. Like it, there's them, it, I don't know if it's embarrassment nah, or yeah. just not wanting to announce yeah. it. It's like yeah. the people don't like to, to bring it to the forefront with hopes of being judged. Mm. You know what I'm saying? With hopes of, you know what I'm saying? So they won't be judged, but right. it's like, there's more people going through what you're going through than you than not. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, it's it's almost a safe space. And C did um, an event last year in Vegas and we were, you know, we were finding out that other people at the event also had children who were autistic. And it's like, mm, damn, know. like you having this, you know what I'm saying? I Like, thank God that we now as a as a family, you know what I'm saying? We, we are able to have the platform that we have and are able to get it out to people. And, and hopefully, you know, it, it makes people feel more comfortable no, and man. they have the ability to be able to go out and get the diagnosis, you know, to, to, than rather not have it. No, yeah, because some because some parents do fight against it, man. For sure. Yeah. And, and, and it's, it's literally, they're dealing with their, I want to say that, when parents are are fighting against getting that diagnosis, it's it's more so an ego thing. Ego, yeah, yeah. 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 like a personal. Yeah. You know what I'm thing. saying? As a as a parent, because you always want to feel as though like ain't nothing wrong with yeah, my child. Exactly. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, mm -hmm. and I felt like for a moment there, because we went to through what two years of like different doctors of like, and they were all telling us that he was fine. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like complete, like never got the wow. diagnosis. It was like, yeah, he's fine, he's fine, and. Again, like C being at the forefront of it, like she didn't give up. She was like, let's let's just try this one more doctor. And I felt like I was kind of getting in the space of, nah, this, like, you know, he all right. Yeah, yeah, like, you yeah, know what I'm yeah. saying? He's going to be mm -hmm. all right. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I thank God that we did go through that last doctor and yeah. we were able to get that the diagnosis. That's fucked up, man. <sighs> man, I love you, bro. Like, seriously, man, like just hearing it, man, just you talking about it. It's truly a blessing, man. Seriously, bro. We always like to uh, close the show like this, bro. And we've had a lot of fun. We've talked about a lot. Um, during this next segment, we call it the keep going segment. And during this segment, we talk about like a time in your life where, you know, you just had to pick it all back up. You know, you were going through things and it was a hard time in your life and you had to pick it all back up. Talk about it, bro. Um, I felt like I've had that more times than not. Um. I would say after my second year in the league, um, I had a hiccup, you know, made a made a bad decision. Um, and just honestly thought that I had wasted everything I worked for away. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just being simple and you know, I'm just making a bad decision. Um, I actually got a DUI here in Philly, mm -hmm. uh, was arrested and everything. Um, I don't know if you remember. That's when I had got mm -hmm. traded to the Eagles or whatever. Remember, yeah. Um, that was a tough time. Um but like mo moving forward, you know what I'm saying? It made me better. It, it made, made me wiser on, on like decisions I needed to make, uh, especially when it came to like drinking alcohol and like handling business and, you know, putting, you know, professionalism first. Um, but the toughest time I felt like I went through was, was a year five or six. Um, I was actually in Detroit. Um, mm. I was out there, you know, it was a situation where I was 
you know, on the team, 53-man roster. Um, and I just felt as though I wasn't being utilized. Like, mm -hmm. I was there for 10 weeks, ended up dressing maybe twice. So it's like I felt like I was getting getting paid a paycheck to sit on the sideline in a sweatsuit. Mm -hmm. um, it was tough for me. Um, off the field, it felt like it felt like I was practicing to no end. Like, it felt like I was – practicing football with no purpose in my life, mm -hmm. um, which caused me going into, I, I ended up getting um, off the field involved in other things and losing my focus. And mm -hmm. I felt like looking back on it, I may have just been like, I may have been working during the day and just like, just drinking at night, like just chilling mm -hmm. in the crib. Like I felt lost to a space of like, my family wasn't able to be out there with me mm. um, because at this point in my career, I think over that two years, I had played for like three different teams. So yeah. it was like my family was staying home simply because it was it was it was better to just because we didn't we didn't know what the future would foresee mm. or whether that would be a permanent place. Like I was at uh, in a space by myself. Um, you know, I was just indulging the things that I wouldn't indulge in. Yeah. Um, I lost my focus. Like I, it felt as though like my. My purpose, whether it came from football or whatever it was, it just felt like it wasn't hitting home. Mm. And it felt, and you know, a, a man without purpose is lost in the world, mm -hmm. uh, no matter what your profession or what, or, or, or uh, occupation may be. And that was a big thing for me. Like it was, it was a tough time. Um, and I'm thankful for my wife through it, um, honestly, because she was, uh, even though she, so, some of the things I may have been doing may have been hurting her. Uh, mm. she was she was still able to be a safe space and she was patient with me through mm. it um, and allowed me to grow through that. Um, honestly, it was, <laughs> I say anyone that was dealing, that's dealing with like, like depression or things like that, like I was going through it at the moment. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It was simply because I didn't, I didn't feel welcome or didn't feel a home or didn't feel, I didn't just didn't feel anything. You know mm. what I'm saying? It felt like a lonely time. And I, I feel like the biggest thing of like, People could say like, oh yeah, you were still making, you know, millions of dollars and this, the money that ever brings you happiness or fulfillment that you actually need in life. And I felt like it was during that time where I actually learned that lesson, you know what I'm saying? And to turn around on the other side of it, it's like, it made me a better man, better player, better father, better husband at the end of the day. And I feel like people just, you as long as you have the right people around you, you'll you'll be good at, at even at, even in your darkest times. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, people should not just you know never give up. Yeah. You know, allow allow yourself to just just take one step further. You know what I'm saying? Take one more step because next thing you know, you look back, you didn't took a hundred hundred more steps from that dark place of where you were at. Um, and I, that's so that's what I got. <sighs> that's. Man, we all like like I said, man, we always get done these episodes and this one tops it, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, it's it's truly special on just you wanting to come on the show. Mm -hmm. You talking about and us going down memory lane, being a Philly kid, going to Penn Charter, getting drafted in the third round, going through all your struggles in the in the, in the National Football League, yeah. having your dream job. Mm hmm being a Baltimore Raven right now, I'm extremely proud of you, bro. Same, same here. You are influencing so many. You influence me and you don't even know it. Mm -hmm. Bro, keep doing what you're doing. Keep being an amazing father. Keep being an amazing husband. Continue to lead these boys. Continue to be the face of autism. Mm -hmm. You and your wife, your kids, I appreciate you, man. Like, this is what Showtime Speaks is all about. This is why we are talking. This is why we gathering. It ain't about how many views. It ain't about none of that, man. We really are trying to impact people, mm -hmm. sharing our story, sharing our hurt, the testimony yep. about how God then got us through these hard times. And, and sometimes our support system has, has lifted us up. And mm -hmm. I love this show. I love the people that are involved. I just love the direction that we're going in and I'm extremely excited for the future. Um, continue, continue, continue to walk on this journey with us, continue to be with us. And you already know, it's always Showtime Speaks. What's the matter with you? There is no tomorrow. There is no tomorrow.